Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Wheel. Have you ever started to change lanes while driving your RV only to suddenly hear honking and then receive a one finger salute when the person passes beside you? Well, today we are talking with Augustine who has a solution to this problem. Cub Auto Parts has developed an RV blind spot detection sensor that will give you confidence when making those lane changes and avoid damaging your RV. So without further delay, let's talk about this product with Augustine. Hi, Augustine. Thanks for joining us today on the show. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Cub? Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm the vice president of the ADAS division in North America. I have about 20 years of experience in the automotive field, and I started with Cub in 2017. And what is the ADAS division, if you don't mind me asking? ADAS is an acronym that stands for Advanced Drivers Assistance Systems. So it encompasses things basically to help people avoid collisions and accidents. Okay, so that makes sense. We want to specifically talk about Cub RV Blind Spot. Can you tell us what it is and how it works? Absolutely. So we have a number of different systems available, and they cover products such as motorhomes, um, towables, including fifth wheels. We do a number of different variety of offerings. We're expanding between the uh, 24 and 77 gigahertz products. So these are anywhere between current automotive standard products and getting into more futuristic products where a lot of the autonomous vehicles are heading and the technologies that they use. Does CUB stand for something? I know you spell it C-U-B, but is it, is it an acronym? So the company started in 1979 in Taiwan, and the company was originally named in Taiwanese. When they did a literal translation to create an English name, the Taiwanese name or the Chinese name translates into like a little bear. So oh. they decided that CUB would be a suitable name in English. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty interesting little fact there. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> and you said that the systems work off of a 24 gigahertz and a 77 gigahertz. Can you kind of explain how does that work? Is it, do the systems work on both and it automatically switches? Or is each system designated to work in 24 or 77? So the frequencies are, are, are pretty much fixed. Uh, what ends up happening is we, we have a number of different chipset solutions that we can use. Um, so these come from name brand suppliers that many people may recognize, such as Philips or Texas Instruments or oh, yeah. uh, ST Microelectronics, analog devices. These are big name brands that we use uh, since we're a global manufacturer and we, we manufacture for the automotive space. In the case of 24 gigahertz, these are commonly what you find in a lot of the, the vehicles today in their blind spot systems. So if you've got a newer vehicle with blind spot detection and you were to take off the bumper shell and look inside, you'd find a radar inside and it's probably, you know, about three, four inches uh, by three to four inches. It's a little, it's a little square brick uh, and it resides inside the bumper. So those operate typically off of 24 gigahertz. As we move into more advanced technologies or new ve newer vehicles that require more resolution, better clarity, greater range, such as forward collision warning, those are usually found in the grill in the, of the vehicles in the front or the front bumpers. These are typically 77 gigahertz because they see longer ranges, but they're also capable of detecting smaller objects such as pedestrians. Right now, most of our, our offerings right now for the RV industry are 24 gigahertz. However, we are introducing and developing a 77 gigahertz solution now, which helps with uh, especially classic motorhomes, which have a very long swept path that typically can sometimes, you know, you end up clipping the pole or, or a curb or a wall that's right in the middle because of, of tight turns. You know, it's interesting that you say wall or pole. I think when I think of blind spot systems, I'm thinking just being on the highway and changing a lane. I don't think about maybe slow mo slow moving getting around trees and stuff but it would help in those scenarios as well yes sir so the 24 gigahertz systems are typically for uh, situations like you described where you're on the highway making lane changes or in the city and in relatively faster moving traffic and then we do with the 77 gigahertz it's capable of low speed monitoring so this could be if they're in the city making a turn on on a, on a curb uh, where it's a 90 degree turn Sometimes, you know, there might be a pedestrian there. Maybe there's a pole there. There's a fire mm -hmm. hydrant, um, you know, a little fence line or whatever the case may be, a scooter, a motorcycle that's sitting on a bicyclist. So these are technologies that we can employ with our 77 gigahertz technology. If I were to purchase a system, 
What is included with it? Today on our 24 gigahertz systems, we offer two different particular, you know, very specific products. We offer one for towables and we offer one for motorhomes. In the case of the motorhomes, you get two sensors, a brain, a, an audible buzzer, a, a power button, and two indicators that get installed inside the A pillar of the motorhome. So pretty much it looks and works just like on a lot of newer cars. You're used to that when you're driving your passenger vehicle and you get indicators and you get the sounds and you get all the functionality as if it was it was installed in your passenger vehicle. Many of these requirements are, are standardized. So we follow the international standards for this. That way it's always the same experience and nobody has to have a learning curve. In the case of trailers, we offer a all-inclusive package. It includes radars for the towable. It includes all the cables, um, just like what in the motorhome kit. It includes a quick disconnect at the seven-way connector. So this way you're adding a connector at the disconnect point at the hitch. There is a complete truck kit, which is a quick disconnector on the truck. All the cabling for that, a plug-in that goes into the OBD port, a brain, and also a suction cup indicator. Because we're not always towing our towables. So when you're parked and you're just driving a truck around like every day, you can Un, you can uninstall by removing the suction cup off the windshield and just tossing it in your glove box. That way your truck is, you know, maintained and it's very tidy and nobody gets curious to break your window and see what that <laughs> indicator is. So That's you were idea. saying, yeah, so you were saying there is something that connects to the OBD2 connectors. And if in the case of a towable, it actually works through that seven pin connector and then to the OBD2 connector? Correct. So through the seven pin, we get signals such as the turn signals and the reverse lead. That way we know what the trailer is doing and what the driver is doing. And then through the OBD2 connector, we get information such as vehicle speed and what the vehicle is doing, if it started. And we also get our power from there. So it reduces the installation time by not tapping as many wires. Okay, got it. It sounds pretty clean that way. Yeah, we try to make it so it's DIYable by the average person. If you're able to do simple things on your trailer, like maybe... Uh, install your brake controller for your truck or if you're able to service certain little things inside your 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 unit uh, we try to make it so it's accessible in all the right places for example our seven-way connector tap points are inside the junction box on a trailer so everybody pretty much should know where that's at because that's where your big long cable connects to and all those colors are unified and you can find all the color codes online we try to make it so it's easy to install it's all plug and play for the most part and it's also all serviceable. So if, say, for example, one day you're pulling away from your trailer, but you, de you decide that you forgot to disconnect your cable and you yank the cable apart, it's not a big deal. Every single part is replaceable down to the bolts and the brackets and everything else like that. And they're very affordable. Okay. Yeah. So you wouldn't have to rebuy the entire kit again. You could get just pieces that failed. Correct. And in the case of other external parts, we actually had a lady who bought a system a couple months ago. And unfortunately, she took her brand new uh, motorhome on a trip and she smashed both sides of the camper. We helped her out and uh, sent her out some new housings, but it's, it's easy to replace parts and it doesn't, it doesn't require buying a whole new system. What about for the person that's maybe not a DIYer? Would most RV dealerships or service centers be able to install this for them? It, or, or do you work with certain service places? We are right now uh, in the middle of training up um, dealer networks and dealerships. Uh, we're also signing up a lot of dealers now. And we're trying to work with major dealer groups to get the products to be, you know, not only sold, but also installed at those points. Hmm. The average, if the RV dealership is capable of installing a radio or a brake controller, they are very, then they are very much equipped to install this system as well. We also offer customer service to them as well, technically, so we can walk them along the way. We have DIY videos on YouTube so they can watch it and get an idea of how to do it. Or the alternative is to go to stereo shops. So, so stereo shops who install things like radios and remote starts and alarms and other you know, blind spot detection systems on cars, they are also very well equipped to install these systems and they can do it with, without very much trouble. What about warranties, Augustin? Do you get the same type of warranty if you install it yourself or if a company installs it for you? Yes. So we offer a one-year warranty standard with the product. And if you DIY it and you're capable of doing it and everything's done right, we warranty the product just the same as if you went to a shop and installed it. If okay. it's installed at the factory where, you know, it's a factory option, then we, we follow the warranty of the, of the coach or um, you know, trailer that you purchased. You have it for towables. But if you're, let's say you're towing, let's say you have a class A and you're towing your 
Jeep behind it. Is there a part that you can put on that Jeep to uh, also indicate blind spots? Unfortunately, at this point, we don't have the dinghy system released yet. So in the future, we are we are developing a system where your Class A uh, blind spot system would cover your dinghy vehicle. However, it's not available on the market yet. Um, it's still something that we're working on. There are several challenges involved that we're trying to work through and make sure that we get every you know everybody covered because some people tow a Jeep, some people tow a toy box, some people tow a, a number of different things. And then on the back of these Class A's, there are also you know different types of appendages that could interfere with our system as well. Okay. So if you are towing, will it make the the current system unable to operate? It won't make it unable to operate. It will still operate. However, the indicator lamp will turn off and turn on, you know, according to the original motorhome length. And it doesn't okay. know that there's something behind it. Okay. So you can reactivate it if you'd like. That's why there's a power button. Or you can just be a little bit more mindful of, okay, well, the system says that I'm clear, but I know that I have a vehicle behind me, so I should probably leave a couple more seconds before I, I change lanes. Okay. Oh, that's good, though, that you can still use it. Yeah. Absolutely. And when you when you order, is it one system works all for the motorhomes and one system works all for the towables, or do you have to say, I, I own a 40-foot Class A or a 30-foot? Is Are there different configurations of them? Yes, there are different configurations. So we offer three different packages, essentially. We offer a motorhome package that is available at different cable lengths to accommodate the different motorhome lengths. We offer a towable as a bumper tow um, travel trailer package, which we offer the correct cables. And then we offer an additional fifth wheel kit, which offers the additional fifth wheel cable that you know takes care of overhang length. So when we when we get orders, uh, we ask what type of vehicle or what type of vehicle or what type of trailer it is. That way, we can include the correct cables in the system. Yeah, I didn't think about the difference between the towable and the fifth wheel. There's certainly a, a slight difference there. Yeah, yeah, you've got to take care of that overhang and the and the uh, the box. So we include an additional 25 foot cable for the fifth wheel extension. That usually takes care of nearly any fifth wheel that I've seen. Yeah. And then what kind of maintenance is involved in keeping the system operational once it's installed? The only operational maintenance that we recommend is occasionally cleaning off the face of the radar. So as you're cleaning and washing the trailer, just, you know, put the sponge to it or hose it off. You know, as long as there's not tons and tons of mud cake on it, it works as normal. Um, the connectors, if you're in a salt area, then we just recommend, you know, uh, just like anything else, you flush that with some fresh water. Uh, otherwise, there is no maintenance for the system. I'm curious, what about rain? Does that affect the system at all? The amount of rain that would be required to affect the system would cause you to not be able to take your RV anywhere. Okay. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, with radar compared to, for example, vision systems, rain and snow and fog don't really impact our performance. The only things that do impact performance significantly is ice buildup. But our radars have a warming, pretty much a warming system inside of them. As they operate, they create heat and melt ice. We've taken our camper from Chicago all the way back to Los Angeles. Well, actually from Elkhart. So we drove Route 66 in the middle of winter during a storm. And the system was fully operational the entire way. Our radar is faced backwards. So typically, there's not a lot of accumulation. Um, it all accumulates on the front end of the radar. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you brought that up. I didn't even think about it not being able to work or being an issue to, for cold, but that's pretty cool that it has its own little heating ability and it keeps it, keeps it operational. Yeah, I, I don't think many people go camping in those conditions. It was probably about 10 to 20 degrees outside, so uh, not, not favorable, but, um, <laughs> you know, hey, you know, uh, overlanding is getting more popular. Mm -hmm. Kenny spends a fair bit of time in cold weather, so. Yeah, 15, yeah. 15 degrees is very comfy. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so once I install the system and I get ready to go on a trip, I turn it on. Is there any testing that I need to do prior to driving or does the system do it all on its own? The system does it all on its own. So as you power up the system, if you're in a motorhome, every time you turn on the key, the indicator lamp will turn on for three seconds and beep at you. So that way you can see that the indicator is working properly and that the audible buzzer is also working so you can hear it. 
If there's anything wrong with the system, it'll blink at you three times and, and beep at you to let you know there's an error. The same thing happens for the trailer systems as well. So if you were to, say, jump in your truck and you plug in the indicator and you fire up your truck, if you forgot to plug in your trailer, the system will also tell you that you're missing your trailer. Uh -huh. Yep. And then if anything goes wrong during the, the course of the trip, maybe, for example, your cable gets pinched or a radar gets knocked off by a tire or whatever the case may be. We operate on high-speed CAN bus, so the system is consistently and constantly talking to each of its parts, and they all have to know that they're all available and they all are there on board. If anything's missing or anything is astray, then the system will give you a warning to let you know something is wrong. Oh, okay. Mm, that's pretty cool. That's good. Yeah, I've actually been on several really bad highways in the U.S., and sometimes that cable, the connector comes loose, um, the connection to the truck. And oh, so, sure. Yeah, and then that's a good feature to have. We're proud to use Amphenol connectors um, on that quick disconnect. So the Amphenol connector is a very reliable, you know, very high cycle connector, which is made for high vibration and all sorts of conditions. So we didn't skimp on any of, any of the parts. That's good to know. I didn't even know that was possible, Sean. I, I have a, a Class A motorhome, but I didn't know, Sean, that your connection from your, I never heard that before, from your a travel trailer fifth wheel to your truck can shake loose. I figured it, it, it clipped in and maybe locked. No, it's just a plug. So a lot yeah. of excess vibration, like I-10 between Baton Rouge and Houston, it can come loose. Oh, I, I had no idea. Yeah. Well, scary. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> you had mentioned when we were talking about the warranties that if a manufacturer had installed it and presented it to the, to the consumer, it would get the same warranty, whatever the manufacturer What's the word I'm looking for? Whatever the manufacturer warranty yeah, is. Yeah, whatever they include. Mm -hmm. So are you guys in works with manufacturers? Can can people purchase this right with their RV, right when they go to a dealer and purchase it all set up and ready to go? There are certain manufacturers that have it available or will have it available shortly. So yes, that, that is becoming um, a, th a thing where it is available. And then we're, con we're constantly working with more manufacturers because they're now seeing the value of this technology. Mm -hmm. And it improves the feature set of their, of their product as well. You know, if, if you look at travel trailers, the average person who buys a travel trailer, typically something around the 20 foot, 25, 30 foot range, these are first time buyers. These are the first times, you know, that they've ever towed anything. Yeah. And the whole idea of, oh, I have to yank something that's five, seven, eight, ten thousand 10,000 pounds behind me and make a lane change. And I'm supposed to do this with my mirrors, but my brand new truck has blind spots, you know, detection. <laughs> it, it's, you know, it's not, it's not unfathomable that these people are, are pretty intimidated. Uh, and it's the same thing with a motorhome. You put somebody in even the smallest class, say, you put them in a, on a 27, 28, whatever, 32 foot, it's still a very large vehicle. And making that lane change is not the same as making a lane change in your, in your uh, four-door sedan or your you know, Escalade or whatever you drive. No, it can be very intimidating. And then yes. with that intimidation comes nerves and mistakes. <laughs> yes. And then you're just, you're white knuckling it. And that's just not an enjoyable experience. RVing is not about having stress. It's about relieving stress. So we're all about making that driving experience better and keeping everybody safer on the road. Because if you've ever seen an RV hit a passenger car, it gets real ugly for both parties involved. Oh, I bet. Yeah. yeah that's probably imagine. not a pretty sight. I, yeah, I wish I would have had this on my, my first RV was a 44 foot fifth wheel. And, uh, this would have been pretty nice to have, especially those first couple of years when I wasn't really quite as comfortable driving it down the road. Goodness, you went straight for the biggest one you could get, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not knowing what it entailed. <laughs> so, Augustin, uh, a lot of the, I guess, the newer trucks and vehicles in general are using like blind spot technology. If, if Sean's truck had blind spot in it already, does it work hand in hand with the cub blind spot? Does he have to shut one of them? Does he would he have to turn his blind spot off in his truck and just rely on the cub, or do they work together? You know, that's a it's a complicated question, and the answer is also equally as complicated. Okay. Um, so the blind spot detections on that are built into the trucks, they have a couple caveats. They have maximum length. Typically, the maximum length on those, I believe, is somewhere around thirty feet or so. So if your trailer is in excess of that, the radar in the truck can't see that far. 
Okay. The second thing is the recommendation for those is that the trailer must be equal or narrower to the width of your truck. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they can't see around your truck either. So it really depends. You know, if you if you have a small travel trailer and you have a big truck, and if they have the towing blind spot system inside where you can accommodate to a to a tow you know a towed item, then you could use your your factory system. But rarely is that the case when we talk about RVs and we're, we're talking about travel trailers or fifth wheels, which are typically always wider yeah. um, or, you know, or in excess of that length to the truck or the tow vehicle. Uh, so that's why we find that our, our towable blind spot system is very helpful, despite that the, the auto manufacturers have made a very good effort and they have great technology. I, I don't knock it at all. It's good stuff, but it just doesn't work for us when, we ha when we're towing RVs. Yeah, I didn't it's think just, I didn't think about the width being an issue, but now that you yeah. mention it, yeah, that's it probably be. critical. Yeah, this is how far out of the loop I am. I didn't even know that the the ones that blind spots that are in a truck even have the capability of watching a trailer. I thought it was just the truck itself. Yeah, some of the newer ones have the capability. You know, they have limited capability, but nonetheless, for for some people, it's awesome. If you've got a Ford, say F one fifty or something like that, with the new blind spot system, and they call it a a trailer bliss system. Hmm. then if you're just towing a utility trailer or you're towing, you know, like the jet ski or something like that behind you, uh, it's yeah. perfect. It's great for that. But when you're towing, you know, a 27 foot travel trailer, that, that doesn't work so well. Or if you've got an F-350, you know, yeah, the dually's wide at the hips, but it's not that, it's not that wide at the taillights at the tailgate. So you find that you're still in the same situation where the system is available on the truck, but you'll have to deactivate it when you use or tow, you know, such a large RV. So on the on a uh, travel trailer or fifth wheel, where does the radar actually mount? The radar gets mounted at the rear corners on the on the sides of the travel trailer or fifth wheel. The reason why we mount it there is typically it's an open spot. It's easy to access. If you've got things on the back like a barbecue or your bikes and things of that nature, it doesn't interfere with it. It's very it's narrow profile, so it doesn't stick out any further than your awnings or your grip handles and things of that nature. It's just it's a good spot. Most trailers have a skirt there at the range that we mount at. So we mount between 29 and 41 inches from the ground. So that's a really ideal location where it's really easy for most trailers to find something to mount at. Yeah, it's a good range. Yeah, so 29 to 41 inches from the ground? Correct. When, when you're mounting, is, does it come with gaskets and stuff like that? I imagine it would for like water to keep it water resistant and keep water out. Yes, not only to keep water out, but also so we don't, you know, our plastics don't mar the side of your unit as well. Oh. Because with composite sides, you don't want a hard plastic rubbing on there from vibration. We know that the trailer's bouncing down the road and it, mm. everything, if it's, if it's not gasketed or, or insulated, then you're going to cause damage over time. I'm just curious that you, you, it seems like you've thought about a lot of stuff going into the product. How many years of development did, did it take to come up with this system? The system took us about a year to develop and test. I know what pains we all go through. I know what kind of service and maintenance that we all need. And we wanted to make a product that doesn't require maintenance or require a lot of you know, care and attention. So it should be just like an automotive product where you install it and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I, I agree with Sean. You guys, I mean, it sounds like you guys thought of everything. It's, it sounds like a, a very solid system. I, it sounds great. We appreciate that. Thank you. What is the cost of the system, or I guess depending on the configuration? And then is it available in stores or is it only available through internet purchase? So the resale price of the system is $9.99. We have dealers set up. We're growing into more dealers. We're also currently in talks with one of the biggest, well, actually two or three of the biggest distributors for RV products. So hopefully that all works out and then it'll make it easier for everybody to obtain the products. Otherwise, it's available on our website, rvblindspot.com. I think that's a great price. I think that's a very more than fair price for, for safety. Yeah, we think so as well. If you have a little tap accident, you know, where you just happen to hit something on the side making a lane change, your repairs will easily be past a thousand dollars. Oh, um, easily. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of our audience. So we have a pretty uh, split audience. Some of some of them are consumers and some of them are industry for, for the people in the industry. What have you guys been using as far as like getting the word out and uh, marketing and, and what have you felt has been working the best for you so far? 
For industry people, it's hard. We attend shows like the, we, we were at the RVIA shows. We do a lot of the, the, the other RV shows around that are local. We use Facebook. We also were at the Elkhart Open House. And we, of course, we're at shows like the SEMA show and the CES show in Las Vegas. So these are the biggest automotive and electronic shows that we're aware of. We have a lot of attention, but it, I understand that from the, uh, the industry side, it's hard because it, it's a brand new thing. And for some people to, to understand, okay, well, how, how do I make this a good value proposition? But the reality is, if you look at all the modern vehicles, everybody on the street now that's got a car either has a blind spot or knows a blind spot. And according to numerous surveys like J.D. Power and, and, and things of that nature, 80% of the people want blind spot detection on their cars. I, I don't assume that these people are not the same groups that buy RVs. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think you mentioned earlier autonomous vehicles, and it seems like every year we get closer and closer to an autonomous vehicle and certainly a lot more sophistication technically inside of vehicles, including RVs. I mean, the electronics in RVs now are pretty incredible. And so this is another piece of that puzzle of autonomy and, and safety. Absolutely. I, I agree with you 100%. Looking at the, the innovations that have come, especially on the motorized side, it's amazing. You know, you look at some of the new Spartan chassis that have a lot of ADAS products on them already. You look at, you know, manufacturers that are introducing safety, not only in just ADAS products, but safety in other, in other fields as well. You look at TPMS, for example, you look at multiplex control, you look at the ability to monitor your coach from your phone or your tablet and really be able to stay on top of things because, you know, it could be you've got a flat tire or you've got a tank that's almost full or you've got a leak in the tank. You know, you can monitor your generator and, and all these other items that are on the coach. It only makes sense to add all the other things to make your your trip that much safer because breaking down or having a collision mid-trip is just not fun. It, it ruins the fun for everybody. Same thing for trailers. It, it's no, it's on a trailer, it's even more difficult. You've got to monitor your tow vehicle and your coach. So... You know, there, there's a lot more going on there. We applaud the ones that are making innovations in the, in the industry to make things easier and make things more accessible and really innovate them to today's standards. Everybody has expectations today for technology. And I feel like the RV industry in the last couple of years has really taken a step forward to bring RV and RVs out of, you know, the dark ages of just being wooden, wooden nails and, and nail guns, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen I've seen it. Uh, growing a little faster. I think for a long time, the RV industry has been behind the times when it comes to you know what what's available to the automotive. But I can see a change or a shift that they are actually working towards getting a little bit more tech savvy and getting these features into the RVs. It's great. Absolutely. I mean, you look at people like Jayco, where they've they've spent money on safety. They put you know the best tires arguably on on the RVs they've gone through they've gone to Goodyear tires across the whole line and that helps people be safer um, because blowouts you know they're they're not good to have and a lot of times people just you know they they overlook these little things that make a huge difference yeah augustine if people wanted to actually see the product and take a look and read more information where's the best place for consumers to go take a look uh, if they want to go online, rvblindspot.com, our website is probably the best place right now. They can also go on to YouTube. Our, our YouTube channel is Cub Group, so C-U-B-G-R-O-U-P. Uh, we've got some videos on there that demonstrate the product and also show the install process and how things work. Or on our website, there are also some dealers that are listed as well. Oh, okay. So they might be able to find somebody close close to where yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're oh, growing the network right now. Um, so with time, they'll be able to walk into store and hopefully be able to put their hands on it and and really see and kind of feel what they're they're trying to buy. We'll link your website into the show notes. We'll also link your YouTube channel into the show notes as well and make it a little easier for anybody that's listening now. You can go to the show notes, click the link and get right to their website. Uh, Very before, good. Thank you. Sure. Before we let you go, though, Augustine, is there anything that Sean and I might have maybe missed or that you would like to add to the conversation? Not, not too much. I think we've had a very good conversation. We've dug into a lot of details and, um, you know, shared some information experiences that, that really could help people out. Our whole thing is if you're using blind spot on a passenger car, why does your much heavier, larger vehicle not have it? 
we appreciate everybody spending the time to listen and, and, and come and listen to this, this podcast. And we also run promotions from time to time. We offer special pricing to first responders and service members. So reach out to us. We want to put the technology in everybody's hands. We, are, we all camp here. Um, we love camping. We, we just think that it'd be nicer to take away a little bit of stress. Well, thanks so much for taking the time, and, uh, and we really appreciate it. Gentlemen, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We want to thank Augustine for taking the time to come on the show and explain exactly what Cubs Auto Parts RV Blind Spot system is and how it works. When you think about how many trucks and cars come with a blind spot system pre-installed, it really makes sense that you would want a similar system installed on your 15,000 pound or plus vehicle as well. We love that it is practically maintenance free and that it's going to help you stay safe on the road and help relieve some of the stressors of driving an RV. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you check out Cub Auto Parts Blind Spot at rvblindspot.com.